Today on the channel, fresh off the Target Holothon, we got the NECA cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Dirk Savage, and Mona Lisa. The Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another NECA Ninja Turtle unboxing and review. And today we're back to the cartoon variety for Dirk Savage and Mona Lisa. But for all your Ninja Turtle needs that are not Target exclusive, make sure you're hitting up Entertainment Earth. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10% on all in-stock items. And of course, anything over $59, it does ship free. We gotta get a deal out there, folks. And some people feel like they didn't get such a good deal on these sets as these latest Target Holothon Ninja Turtle figures. I guess be it Archie, be it Mirage, be it these, be it Last Ronin. A little bit of a price hike, a little bit of a price increase. And as we go farther and deeper into these lines, deeper cut characters, more expensive prices tuning a lot of people out and I guess I really do understand that to me I'm in too deep I've gone too far I'm in too deep I gotta see this through and that's what we're doing here today on the channel and of course we're gonna unbox this like we do all the other ones here on the channel we're gonna take a look at the packaging we're gonna talk about it we're gonna unbox it we're gonna talk about it we're gonna see where it goes from there so without further ado let's take a look at old Dirk Savage Mona Lisa some of these packs are a little interesting it's like oh we got Dirk who do we put Dirk in with well I guess Mona Lisa works and there's a lot of people that want just Mona Lisa that didn't want Dirk and even a little bit vice versa but I think a lot of people wanted Mona Lisa not as many people want Dirk Savage which I guess is a brilliant business plan here making people get the Dirk Savage even though they didn't want him but it's the way it goes here with these cartoon turtles but big window packaging of course, you got the yellow and green, like a young 1989 Oakland A's, looking really, really good. Turtles right there, Nickelodeon logo, their names, nice artwork as well. You got Dirk Savage on this side, looking like a young Nick Fury. That's what he reminds me of, of course. And on this side, old Mona Lisa. Oh, what a love interest. Everybody needs a little love interest. And there they are in the back, little glamour shots of them. I don't think it says anything special about them, never does. Dirk Savage, Mona Lisa, it does say collect them all. Make sure you get Rex 1, check out that unboxing on the channel. Zack and Smash, check out that review on the channel. And then Lotus and Chakahachi, coming soon to the channel. I'll get around to it eventually. It's in my stack over there of my to-do list, my long to-do list. But let's get these guys and gals out of the package here. Pull it out. There it is. Nothing left. You get the little entrance to the sewer right there, looking really nice. Off to the side, a nice gentle see you later as I am keeping my packaging, for now at least, for now. Uh, we get two bubbles, we get one with full of hands, and we get one with all the accessories and the figures. There it is, the old plastic prison. Looking big, looking bad, looking nationwide like a young ZZ Top. I'm going to take this offline, get all these twist ties out. We'll be back talking all things Dirk Savage and Mona Lisa. All right, we got Dirk Savage and Mona Lisa out of the package. Let's dive in and let's start ladies first, but let's look at these hands first. I'm not going to uncork all these guys out of the plastic prison quite yet, but we get two different rows of hands all together. Mona Lisa coming with tons of different hands here. We got two fists. We got splayed out hands. We got gripping hands. We got two very amphibian web hands on her right out of the package. So plenty of hands there. And then Dirk Savage, he came to throw down. He came to fight with any mutant that crosses his path as he does have two fists of fury. And then we got two trigger hands and two gripping hands. So choose your own hand adventure with these guys. Thought I'd call that out at the beginning here. Now let's break these down. Let's start ladies first. I guess Mona Lisa, we'll start with her. And let's start with some of these accessories. Of course, a lot of college or school student type stuff with her. We got our physics and chemistry books, as we say, and a lot of stuff here. Great reuse for toy photographers. Two books here. You can put these in a library, have somebody looking at these, whatever. You put them with Peter Parker. He's at school. Uh, do whatever you want, but you got a physics and chemistry book, a red and a blue book. Looking really, really nice here. So we do have those two. And then we get, I believe, is this like a cattle prod? And I'm not sure. I don't think this is Mona Lisa's uh, weapon now that I think about it. This probably belongs to old Dirk over there, but it looks like a cattle prod to me. I'm not really familiar with what this is, and a couple accessories here are kind of a head-scratcher to me, but not sure exactly, but that's what it reminds me of. It looks like a cattle prod of some kind, or maybe a cane. I, I don't know, but we do get that here, and I think this is probably Dirk Savage's now that I think about it. But we continue on with uh, Mona Lisa's stuff. We get a lot of student-type stuff here again. We get uh, nice beakers here. Uh, beakers? Uh, test tubes. Test tubes, I think is what this is. You get a teal one, a green one, and a pink one. And the cool thing is they are removable. They fit in the holder here. You can take them out 
once again, great for toy photography. You can have Dr. Mindbender looking at these. You can do a lot of stuff with this, but you got these looking really good, these nice test tubes. Then you get a little... I think this is more of a beaker type style here. We get a pink liquid here, and it almost looks like a straw. I think that's what that's supposed to be, a straw here. Uh, she's whipping something up in the lab, and she's taking a drink. So we do have one of those, and then we do got this one. Not sure. This almost looks like a potion of some kind, uh, but a nice green liquid in here. Got the cork bottle at the top, or the cork topper, I should say. And then you've got the pronged uh, there at the bottom to hold it. So a lot of scientific stuff. You can have her and Donatello squaring off in the lab, and I think... I can't remember, did she like Raphael or Donatello? She Maybe she liked both of them. I can't remember exactly how it went, but I think she did like both of them at one time. So you can have that going on there. And then this, I have no idea what this is. Some kind of a trap, maybe? Uh, I'm not real sure. This top part does come off. Once again, this may go to Dirk Savage. I'm not really sure what this is. I, I wouldn't be shocked if it didn't go to Dirk Savage. Maybe it's some kind of a, a capture device, something like that. But uh, we do get this here. Whatever it is, another one of those head scratchers, I guess we'll call it. Now we're going to dive into Mona Lisa and we're going to look at both of her heads first. Let's look at this head right out of the pack here. A nice kind of docile, very inviting face here. Got a little bit of smiling going on. Got that big, big hair uh, looking really good. Got those very loving, kind eyes on Mona Lisa. Just looking really, really nice. No problems with that one. Big, big head. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the April O'Neil NECA cartoon figure as that had such a big head on it and kind of a littler body. Kind of have that same thing going on right here. So very interesting, but this is what I think of when I think of Mona Lisa. And then you do get a very mad, angry head. I don't think of that a whole lot, but all of a sudden Donatello got her all mad or whatever, or Raphael did, or Michelangelo, or Donatello, whoever, pick your turtle, got her all worked up, and she's got the angry, mad face. And I like this, but I'm probably not going to use this on her, but we'll have, of course, glamour shots of all these things uh, in this, this very video. But there's the heads on her, but let's look at some of this other stuff. She does got that nice pink handkerchief around her neck looking really really nice articulation wise like talked about the head moves around that handkerchief does move move really good on her there and then the arms go all the way around i will say these are very very small tiny arms you got to be careful here but you got a bicep cut you got double jointed elbows man those are very very small arms be careful with these. I can see this breaking off very easily right there. You do get hands back and forth. Got the webbed hands here, which I, I like that look on her, so I'll probably leave these on her. But you got two webbed hands. She just got a nice brown belt with a little uh, medallion there, looking really good. Breaks up kind of the monotony of the coloring and the sculpt. Uh, and then you do get a nice underbelly, kind of a, a little cleaner, a little lighter color compared to the greens on the underbelly. She can do those big old Mona Lisa splits if need be. She does got double jointed knees and then she's got side to side back and forth up and down on the feet. So a decent amount of articulation here. And I would have to imagine this tail has some articulation. Yes, it does. So she does have a nice tail going on back there. Nice curl up there to it. Uh, just a good looking representation of Mona Lisa. And she is a deep cut, but at the same time, not a super, super deep cut. At least in my mind. Depends, I guess, where you watched your turtles and what you remember of your turtles too. Does she fit on a ringside collectible stand and a little bit of a curveball right here? Only one foot has a peg hole. We don't see that very often. Uh, I can't think the last time I saw that, honestly. But she's got one foot that fits, and it is going to be not fitting on a ringside stand, unfortunately. Nope. Not going to happen. So she's got a spot for a peg hole. Not going to fit on a ringside stand with the old Mona Lisa there. But it is what it is, I guess we'll call it at that point. But a nice representation of a character uh, that we know and kind of love. Kind of love. Uh, I guess it's up to you. But now we're going to turn our attention over to the mutant hunter himself, old Dirk Savage, like a member of the Sentinels. If he was in the X-Men, he'd be joined up with the Sentinels, hunting those mutants. That's what he'd be doing. But let's look at his accessories first. Looks like he's got some interplanetary space handcuffs here you got the wire in between uh you put these over there and it is some uh, handcuff action there so we got those got two weapons of course very futuristic space gun style got the red on the front got the gray the white and the gray throughout looking really good looking really sharp looking like a good weapon little pistol action and then you got this weapon here looking really cool i'm not sure exactly what you call this i guess a, a rifle uh, i don't know i don't know my weapons but looking very good as well you got the black strap here you can put it over your shoulder if you need to uh, but he's got two different weapons choose your own weapon adventure then a really cool thing is here this looks to be a backpack uh, you got the peg in the back and yes it is it does go in the back very gi joe like uh, dirk savage ready to join the joe team i guess but this will plug right in the back you plug it through the old uh strap there and bam there it is so you can store his weapons on there if you need to like i said he did come with two fists of fury so we got to do something about that 
But looking good, looking like Dirk Savage. Always reminded me of Nick Fury, of course, from Marvel. He's got the eye patch going on. Maybe that's what gives it away. Got a big old Jay Leno style chin here. Uh, a guy like this, uh, you can just hear his voice. Kind of like that Man Ray from the Archie comics, which we unboxed. Uh, you can kind of hear what his voice would be like just by looking at the character. Same thing with uh, him right here. He looks just like... Uh, he looks like he sounds, or he sounds like he looks, maybe, whatever you want to say, but definitely looks good here. Love the big poof to the hair on the top, the big curl, like a young Conan O'Brien is what he looks like there. Got the big old chin split right there as well, looking really nice. Got shoulder gauntlets here, guarding him. He's got the bandolier over the top, ready to go. He's got his nice utility belt. Got some canisters here, probably some, some uh, gas uh, in there or something, or a grenade, whatever you want to call it. Looking nice there. He's got pockets on the side. Looking nice. They're not removable. They aren't usable. Not functional at all. Uh, but definitely look good. And then he's got the red top against the gray and the blue. Just a good looking figure. And a little bit of something different as far as a villain, a mutant hunter, or whatever. We're used to the Toka and Rezar. Some of the bigger characters, the mutant characters. Well, it's a human character that's out there fighting the... I wouldn't say the good fight, but I don't know. The bad guy fight? Sure, we'll call it that. But of course, articulation-wise, his arms do go around. They are a little bit limited by those shoulder gauntlets. Head back and forth, side to side, up and down. Good head movement on this guy. A lot of down on him. Not so much up, but a lot of down. You do get the bicep cut, like I said. Double jointed elbows. Very, very tight joints. This guy needs a, a time with the hair dryer for a little bit. Hands back and forth, side to side. As they, they do move, but they're not as free as I would like them to be, so I'm going to be a little extra careful with this one. You got the hula hoop. You got traditional waist. Oh, yes, there it is. Very tight traditional waist. We do have it there, though. He can do those big old Dirk Savage splits if he needs to. And then he's got uh, double jointed knees. Once again, very, very, very tight. Boot cut, no boot cut, but you do get ankles back and forth, side to side. Does he fit on a ringside stand? We got two peg holes in the feet here, so there might be a better opportunity. And what do you know? He fits like a glove, fits right there, fits really, really good. So Mona Lisa and Dirk Savage through the door here. An interesting one. Like I said, a little bit deeper cut. The cuts keep getting deeper in this cartoon line. Uh, it just, I guess, depends how deep you like it. <laughs> there you go. More ways than one. But we got uh, Leonardo here for a little scaling action. You can kind of see how these guys all scale together. But an interesting one. One I don't see flying off the shelves. Once the initial collectors, everybody gets them. Now I'm starting to see, I just yesterday I saw round two of the Holothon refill, and it was a lot of these turtle packs. They all refilled back in the stores. Don't seem to be moving super, super fast as, as much as the first time, because like I said, the hardcore collectors, the first time collectors, they're grabbing those. Then who wants it on the second round? Some of those people that are hardcore collectors will get them, but some of these might go to a little bit of a peg warming status. We saw it with the frogs, the punk rock frogs, for instance. Uh, I don't know. Some of these new sets, might have that same one the thugs i love those but i'm not sure those are going to be for everybody so it'd be interesting to see how these all net out but at the end of the day it's a cool pack is it a deep pack is it a must-have probably not but it just uh, depends on your own turtle adventure as we'll call it and that's where we're going to leave it here today but let me know in the comments your thoughts on this two pack did you pick it up did you pass on it let me know your thoughts. And of course, you made it this far, you might as well like the video. Subscribe to the channel. We got videos every single day, so make sure you turn on the old notification bell. Check out the Patreon for early access to videos like this. Bonus content, Q&As, giveaways, you name it. A lot going on over the Patreon. It is the best way to support the channel. You can also support the channel over at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And then don't forget social media, Sir Paul 64 on Twitter. Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for Mona Lisa and Dirk Savage, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.